Hey everybody, welcome to Bish's RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and today what I want to do is break down the three most common uh, slide mechanisms, the three most common slide systems used in the towable RV industry because like right behind us here, you see one RV has two different type of slide mechanisms. Why would they do that? And the short answer is because different systems have different advantages and different drawbacks and they're each kind of best utilized in a little bit different way. And I want to help you gain a better and more deeper understanding of these things so you can be a better, more educated consumer. That's always the goal of our videos, to give you that kind of fair and transparent information. And if you appreciate that as we go here, uh, like our video or hit that subscribe button if you're new with us. And uh, we always have, in addition to a bunch of RV tours, uh, informative videos like this coming out. So what we're going to do is look at rack and pinion slides, cable slides, and Schwintec slides, break down each of their advantages and their drawbacks, uh, giving you that fair information. Also going to do a quick uh, touch on like their manual override methods and uh, a little bit of history on some of their track records to, uh, you know, to, to maybe help just give you the, the feel for which one's going to be the best for you to help you pick out which RV might have the system that gives you the most confidence and peace of mind. All right, so kicking us off here, I think it's most appropriate to begin with a rack and pinion slide system. This has been around pretty much longer than any of the other ones. Um, this is also sometimes called a through frame slide because if you notice here, what's happening is we have basically this big ram bar attached to the slide out that actually does base essentially you know have a hole punch through the uh the chassis frame rail and uh the actual push pull mechanism is all located underneath the floor of this rv which is both one of its greatest assets as well as its greatest liabilities so a little bit of that bad news first because it has that um that bar that rack and pinion bar that goes into the belly of the beast that means that it might fight for space in the underbelly that could otherwise be occupied by things like holding tanks so that can be a problem where sometimes there's just not space in the belly of a specific floor plan to have bigger holding tanks because of this kind of slide system now it's less of an issue on a giant fifth wheel like this more of an issue on a smaller trailer additionally because the frame rail the chassis frame rail does essentially have to have a hole punch through it it usually means that manufacturers have to rely on a taller heavier weight um, chassis so as a result not only does the rack and pinion system itself weigh more but an RV with a rack and pinion system that often needs a larger chassis will tend to also weigh more so there's a bit of a one-two punch there so why would they use this well, there are several very good and very desirable reasons to look at a rack and pinion slide system. Uh, one of the things that it can be very good for is getting away from like a little toe stubber uh, step up slide like that. It allows the slide to actually um, kind of angle down and become a, a little bit more floor flush. Here's a quick little look at one actually in motion. I, I'm hoping you can kind of see what I mean there. You might see how it sort of climbs down a ramp when it does that. Now, because it has that ramp down motion potentially uh, as part of it, if it's more of a floor flush slide, if you look at it from the outside, it might look a little bit wonky. You're probably not able to really discern it from this camera angle, but if you're standing uh, at an RV in person and you look at it, some of the slides look like the roof isn't flat, like it's angled down. You're like, what, these clowns don't know how to build a square box? Because the RV slide has to slide down like that, it actually can't be like just perfectly rectangular or boxy. It has to have a little bit more of a, uh, what's trapezoidal-ish kind of um, shape to it uh, effectively. It's, it's a rhombus or whatever, you get the idea. That, however, does come with an interesting side effect that's a positive benefit. Because the roof is slanted down a little bit away from the RV, it organically has a solid level of water runoff, so you don't end up with water kind of pooling up on top of the roof that could sort of backflow and dam toward the RV. Where that's really handy is when you're camping when it's hot and cold, if you have some snow build up there, if it's all flat, you can have a freeze and a thaw and a freeze and a thaw a phenomenon called ice damming can occur, which can basically cause ice to work its way under a seal, lift it and allow water to seep in. It's not to say that it can't happen here, but it helps prevent that a little bit better. Now, a few more quick notes for you on this system. Uh, one of the other benefits of a rack and pinion slide system is that instead of extending it fully, if you want to extend it only partially, it doesn't screw anything up. Basically, you can tell the motor to go until I don't want you to anymore, and where that can be beneficial is like if you wanna just partially open a slide out for some level of travel or storage access, but keep in mind, it is not recommended you actually 
functionally use the slide when it is only partially deployed. Now, um, these systems are very popular on these big slides, a big, full, deep, super slide. They just tend to handle big, heavy weight better than some of the other systems that we're going to talk about today. Now, rack and pinion slides can be found on just about anything uh, in the towable RV world from those big fifth wheels we're looking at even down into many small travel trailers, although you don't tend to see them on the smallest trailers. We're going to explain a little bit more of that uh, as to why when we uh, get a little bit further. One of the other things that I want to mention on this, again, being fair, trying to give you all the information I can. Um, if you tow down the road a lot, if you're on not super nice smooth roads, if you hit some nasty potholes or has anyone ever pulled into a campground with a smooth driveway? I know I never have. Either they're full, it's dirt and it's full of potholes, or if it is paved, they usually have speed bumps to slow people down. So when this thing is, uh, and this is a technical term, it's nerdism number 37 I'm gonna give you here. When it's jiggle banging down the road, it could, could cause that slide box to kind of shift a little bit. This has, a, uh, rack and pinion slides have a six way adjustment. They can go in, out, up, down, left, right, uh, a little bit, which sounds almost like that uh, NES Konami code that I just rattled off there. But um, <laughs> a little bit of my, my nerd history for you. But what I'm getting at is every now and then, it's a good idea to kind of visually inspect your slide to make sure it looks like it's making proper seal contact all the way around. A slide adjustment is not a hard process, but if you don't catch that, and uh, it is a little bit out of adjustment just from normal towing and bouncing down the road, it could be a way that water could penetrate into the RV without actually having like a seam failure or a leak or something like that. So keep that in mind. Now, let's talk manual overrides, because pretty much every slide system has one. I'm not really aware of a slide system that doesn't. Uh, with a rack and pinion slide, the motor or the, uh, the override's actually on the motor itself, which typically is located down in the underbelly. Now, enclosed underbellies have become a more and more common and popular thing. What that means is that you probably can't overtly see the motor. Um, it it kind of means that you have to either drop the underbelly paneling to find it or cut an access panel to the motor that you can, uh, you know, get to. And basically there's either a wrench or you can hook up a, a, a socket to a drill and basically power the thing in and out. Keep in mind though, that is generally speaking a very slow and laborious process um i've helped uh manually override two rack and pinion slides in my days and there were several of us taking turns because basically we just you'd crank on it for a while and you'd get some fatigue setting in and you'd have to change hands with somebody else so we uh, had two or three people kind of tag teaming it to make it happen the good news you don't generally have to do that um, not for the purpose of a slide failure. It's not to say that it can't happen, because I've never claimed that any of these things are perfect or foolproof or bulletproof or anything like that. But what I'm getting at here is that rack and pinion slides are generally considered the most uh, reliable slide system out there, especially when you get up into the, uh, the big fifth wheel segment where things get very heavy. There's a lot of people who specifically will say, if it doesn't have that rack and pinion slide system, I don't know that I want it. Now, that doesn't necessarily hold true for everybody, but that is a recurring trend that I've noticed from the comments on videos like these. Now, as we go through this video, if anyone has any experience like actually dealing with the manual override or failure on these, I am welcoming you to share that in the comments section so that other people can see that. But keep in mind, um, if, if like you've had an RV with any of these slide systems for a long time and haven't had issues, I'd love it if you shared some of that too so that people might get to see a little bit of an AB and draw some of their own conclusions. I'll leave it up to you. So that's Rack and Pinion in a nutshell. And again, there's a lot more to learn about any of this stuff. I'm trying to give you just the base sort of generalized information. If you need something more specific, contact our team and we can try to help you here. Now, next up, cable slide systems. Now I'm also, I, I'm going to begin this by telling you I don't fully understand the engineering and the wizardry and how this works. I don't fully understand how a cable can push a slide out. I've had someone try to explain it to me in dumb words that I could understand and obviously they were still too smart for me. I don't fully get it. I know that it works and I know its advantages and its disadvantages and that's what I'm gonna focus on telling you today. <laughs> All right, so unlike a rack and pinion slide, which has that the mechanism actually exists below the floor line, a cable slide system exists completely above the floor line. So there's nothing down here that actually has to pass through into the chassis frame rail. 
And as a result, because it doesn't actually have to pass into the chassis or into the underbelly, it means that some of the advantages of this are, are the exact opposite of some of the disadvantages of the rack and pinion slide system. Not only is the cable slide system itself lighter, but it may not require the RV to be outfitted with a taller, heavier chassis, which can save additional weight and cost. Also, since it's not fighting for underbelly space, that means that these may have the opportunity for larger holding tanks, which is very important for some people. And now, very similar to a rack and pinion system, even though this exists completely above the floor, it can still accept uh, what the industry generally refers to as a floor flush slide. Even though it does technically nudge up a little bit right there, it doesn't have that big, obvious toe stubber. Now, as a result of that, that means that the floor flush cable slides, not all of them are floor flush, but the ones that are, have the exact same not exactly rectangular box shape, so you do maintain that water runoff on the outside. But one of the things uh, that is a slight kind of knock against cable slides, it doesn't tend to be too offensive, but it's the fact that the whole mechanism actually exists inside of the RV above that fascia header board. So what that means is that the slide face itself does tend to stick into the RV just a little bit. Now, I want to make it clear what we're looking at here. I actually did pull that slide out in slightly just to kind of help give you that visual demonstration. Normally, it wouldn't even be that severe. Now, since the mechanism basically exists inside the RV, it is a little bit more protected from the weather. Uh, but I want to talk manual overrides real quick because it's very different from a rack and pinion. You don't have to get into the belly of this thing. If you feel around up here, you'll basically eventually feel the motor. Um, and all of these come with what I like to call the miniature shake weight because, I mean, look at that. Look at that. Now, if you want to have fewer campsite neighbors, what you do, you just maintain eye contact with them with a dead stare the entire time you're doing this. And then to really make it, you know, keep it 100, you just you just lick the lips real quick. Usually by the next morning, they've moved out. A little pro tip for you. Also a pro tip, always bring a power drill with you when you're camping, because that is how you're going to manually override this. You're going to hook it in there. It will bend down, and then you just drill it shut, basically. There's only one little hiccup with that. It's very, very rare, and it's ultra floor plan specific, but I've seen about two examples where if the slides are manually overridden and closed, they may essentially block you from getting to the entry door to get back out of the RV, and you might have to actually go out of a window or something like that. It's not common, it's not normal, um, it's exceptionally rare, but it is a funky little thing that can happen. And you know, even if it's a, a, a lightning strike, low occurrence chance, I like to give you that information to help you make those fair decisions. But sometimes people look at this and they say, that little cable, in that big box, it just does the there's a mismatch there. The sizing of this feels wrong. How is that supposed to support this? Again, it is it's it's not just a, it's not just a common grade cable. It's an aircraft grade cable. Maybe that doesn't mean much to you, but it's something made for extremely high tensile strength. Um so could it snap? Could it fail like that? In theory, I mean, yes, that is technically possible. It's exceptionally uncommon. Usually if something happens, it's where uh, a cable attaches to a fitting and the fitting basically comes loose. The cable itself doesn't typically snap and just fail. Again, could it happen? Yes. Is it common? No. Is it common for the, the cable just to pull out of a faster? No, that's also exceptionally uncommon. But again, it could theoretically happen. What is a little bit more common is over the years, if you stretch this, it's think of it like just kind of stretching string or fabric. That cable, while not likely to break, it may stretch over time. And when it's all the way in or out, you might see that cable kind of slack a little bit. Usually, it's not an issue. Usually, when you hit the motor, the motor will kind of suck up the slack and then start pushing or pulling the slide, which, again, as far as I'm concerned, is some kind of magic uh, that I don't fully understand. Dr. Strange uh, had a, uh, a hand in this, apparently. Um, it is possible, though, at a service center to basically unstring the slide and have that slack pulled out and be pulled back a little more taut if that's something that you're looking for. Uh, looking for. So let's talk track records. Just like we did on rack and pinion, you're going to hear some very different responses to cable slides. And it likely depends very much on the time period in which somebody purchased an RV that may have had a cable slide. Um, and again, I'll never say that any system is perfect. I'm, uh, I'll never say that you can trust it between this year's and this year's. But when cable slides are first introduced in the RV industry, 
they should not have been used in the RV industry. That is an annoying trend I have seen happen in the RV industry, like keyless door lock sets. I've, I saw those come and go real fast from the business because the ones that were used in the RV business largely were junk. The ones that you see used nowadays, typically a little bit better. Cable slides today kind of follow a similar logic. When they first came out, they should not have been used. They were not ready for the, the, the type of application that they were being asked to do. There was also a period around the 2015 to 2016 era where, uh, the, and there's more than one manufacturer of cable slides, by the way, they're not all identical. These are common theme generalities that I'm sharing with you today. But there was one specific manufacturer in the 2015 to 16 era that um, basically totally screwed the pooch on their own engineering. They tried to change their system up. They, uh, they just flat made some serious errors, some serious misses. There were a very large number of cable slide failures in that 2015 to 16 area. Uh, at this point, those RVs have either been repaired um, and, and, and you know the, worked out. Uh, it's, it's not real likely that there's a 2015-16 RV out there with an original slide mechanism that failed and was never repaired in today's market. So kind of keep that in mind if you're shopping in the used world. But there was a period there in a fairly modern time that they were really, really an issue. Um, I feel personally they're a less common problem now, but there are a number of people that I see reporting in the comments section of my videos who say I like everything about this except maybe the cable slides. It is a point of concern. It is a deal breaker for some people. And again, I welcome that feedback, good, bad, ugly, or otherwise. Please share your insights, your experiences, and your stories. And if you're like, I've had a cable slide for years. I haven't had any problems with it. Let me know. If you had a failure, let us know so the other people watching this and checking the comment section can get some additional insights into that. Because, of course, I would say it's fine. What about the people who actually spent their money on this and had some experience? That's the kind of extra detail and level that I want to open this video up to, and I want to see that. And finally, the, the last system I'm going to talk about in depth today, and we're going to touch on a couple others very briefly, uh, is going to be the Schwintech slide system. It's very easy to spot. Instead of a ram bar, instead of cables on the side of the slide out, you have these silver little worm looking gears. Uh, typically one on top, one on bottom. Every now and then a manufacturer will add an additional one of these rails. We'll kind of talk about why in just a few minutes here. This is the lightest weight slide system out there. Um, similar to cable slides, because it doesn't have to penetrate a chassis frame rail, it exists completely above the floor. That means that um, it, it saves on the potential, you know, you don't necessarily need a bigger, taller, heavier, and more expensive chassis. It also leaves the underbelly completely um, open to maximize uh, holding tank uh, capacity. Now, these slides are especially popular on smaller and lighter weight units. One, because they weigh less, they allow a small RV to weigh less, which opens up a lot of different uh, tow vehicle options. The other thing is, if you notice, uh, when we were down low here, there the wheel well of this RV stuck up above the floor line. So this can work where a cable slide can't, because otherwise, so far, it kind of sounds like, well, these have the same advantages as a cable slide. Why would you use them? They're a little bit lighter and they can go in places that a cable slide just generally cannot go above a wheel well being one of those. Now that does mean that these always have some version of step up slide. Um, they always have some kind of toe sever where a rack and pinion or a cable slide could be potentially floor flush. These absolutely cannot. They always have a, basically just an exact straight box roof line. But because the slides tend to be smaller, they have less surface area that could potentially like gather up and pool up water or again, cause that ice damming phenomenon that I mentioned before. That being said, if it's snowing, unless you can't get away from it, I always recommend closing slides in the snow. That's just not really a good idea if you can avoid it. Now, one of the drawbacks to a Schwintech slide system is that it is really intended to be only fully opened or fully closed. So where a rack and pinion slide or a, uh, a cable slide, I might've forgot to talk about that on cable slides, I'm so sorry. A cable slide can also be partially open without screwing it up. Again, it really should not be occupied when only partially open. A Schwintech slide with that silver worm gear is intended to be used. Uh, basically, you should fully close the slide or you should fully open it. It doesn't really play well with um, in-betweens, but why is this one different? 
And the answer there essentially boils down to the fact that this has more than one motor activating and, and moving and trying to talk to one another at the same time. So like a rack and pinion slide, a cable driven slide system, um, there's, there's really just one motor doing the trick. So when you push in or out, it knows it's just going in or out. With a Schwintec slide system, there's more than one motor. There's usually like a, uh, I'm doing this in reverse camera. There's a motor over there, there's a motor over here. And when you give them the go signal, because of the way signal attenuation works in a wire and, and signal delay, one of them always starts a little bit faster than the other. Not enough to really make too much of a difference, but here's one of my handy little low-tech demonstrations. This is the face of a slide out. In theory, you want it to go straight in or out all at the same time. But with a Schwintec slide, when you hit the button, open or closed, one motor will kick just slightly before the other one. And then when you you know go the other way, it'll do the same thing. Now, uh, if you do that enough times, instead of the slide coming straight in and out, it wants to come in and out at an angle and then you're 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 really stressing the walls, the motor, the H column that this is all built into, and you can have a significant failure if you do that. So how can you avoid it? it basically, the way these slides work is they're self-adjusting. So when you uh, run the slide all the way in or out, you're gonna go till it stops, and then you're gonna hear it go like, doo, 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 and you're gonna watch the slide kind of jiggle a little bit, and then it just totally stops. You, you're going to hold your finger on that button until no noise happens that is when you let off the button here. You're not sitting there grinding the gears. You're not stressing the motor. You're making sure that it is lined up all the way in or out. So with a Schwintec slide, if it does get a little bit kitty wampus, you can usually self-adjust that by fully extending, waiting, fully retracting, waiting, maybe doing that a couple times, and typically you can get your own slide back to square. Now, manual overrides with these can be uh, a, a little tricky, and it's almost something... If you're curious about it, I almost recommend you practice. But basically, you actually have to kind of reach back there. You have to kind of, you know, get your fingers almost into the slide seal because the motor is actually hidden inside the wall up there. And when you do that, um, you, you, you basically pull the motor out and then you can get one of those little like uh, bendy jobs that we saw on the cable slides and you can drill the thing open or closed if you need to. Now, um, again, it's not the most easy process um, I, I don't know a lot of people have had to do that a lot of times. I've definitely seen the reports where every now and then somebody has had to do that. So what are we looking at for track records on Schwintec slides? Well, just like cable slides, you're going to see some mixed reviews out there. Um, and there's a couple reasons for it. Um, the Schwintec slide mechanism itself is fine when applied and used properly. Now, that means that it needs to be put in the right kind of slide in the right sort of slide box in the right application by the manufacturer. The laborer needs to have it installed properly and you need to know how to use it properly. And that means that your dealer should educate you on that. Not all of those things necessarily always happen. Um, when Schwintec slides were first released, they're, because they're one of the more le uh, less expensive slide systems, a lot of manufacturers are going, ha, great. We're going to start using these left, right, and center because it's going to save us a ton of weight and a ton of money. We're going to look like heroes. But the problem was they were putting them on like 30 foot long, big, giant, super mega deep slides that had like kitchens buried into them that were super, super heavy. Schwintec slides work best in a shallow, lightweight application, like a bed slide, maybe just a sofa, just a dinette, something like that. Something that is big and heavy, It they just tend to wear out. Now, when it's first built, and typically while it's under warranty, that's the kicker, um, they will tend to work just fine. But if you use your RV a lot, it just gets tired and it wears out. It, the motor starts getting weak. It starts going, eh, 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 like having a hard time going in and out. And it only tends to get worse, not better. So when used and uh, properly by the manufacturers, by uh, when you're educated properly by dealers, when you apply the proper use, and part of that being, remember how I said, fully open it, fully close it. Don't try to pile a ton of extra weight into it when you're opening and closing it. Um, you know, little things like that. If you use them properly, I think they're fine. But once again, 
Of course I would say that. I recognize why somebody would doubt anything that I say because at the end of the day, even though I'm giving you a, an informative video here and I'm not trying to show you an RV and, and hope that you'd call our team and purchase it, at the end of the day, I do work for an organization that doesn't make money if we don't sell RVs. And I can recognize that. So once again, I'd like to open up the floor for anyone who has experience with Schwintech slides. If you've had one for a while and it's treated you great, please share that. If you've had one and it's failed you, please share that. I want that good, fair, transparent information out there. Now, all that being said, there's a, a couple other little things that I wanna to touch on real fast before we wrap up. The first of which here is going to be the Happy Jack slide system. These are something you just don't see as much today. They're not extinct, you know, or anything like that. They're just, they seem to be used in only specific applications. We're actually looking at one right here. And basically it follows a lot of the same general logic and guidelines as a Schwintech slide. Although I do think um, you can actually partially open and close this without an issue. Typically though, you don't got to worry about it because uh, slide outs equipped with a Happy Jack slide mechanism tend to be so shallow that usually they don't block the RV off when they're closed. So it's kind of a bit of a moot point. The reason, one of the ways you can tell what you're looking at here is it doesn't have those silver worm gears, it doesn't have the cables, but it's still an above the floor, above the wheel well kind of slide system. Another thing that's pretty common on Happy Jack slides, you look over here and you don't see a slide button on the control panel and it throws a lot of people off sometimes. Instead, Happy Jack systems tend to have the button in the slide box itself doesn't necessarily have to be there. It just usually tends to be a little more self-contained, less wiring running around. And um, they they share a lot of the same benefits as like a Schwintech slide. You know, they're, they're good for above the floor, above the wheel well, kind of lightweight applications like that. Um, the uh, the thing is, what what's interesting is you don't see that many. Something I don't know, but I suspect as a result, just knowing what I know about the industry, I bet they're more expensive than a Schwintech slide system. Um, but that actually kind of leads me to my next fact, track record. I've personally only ever seen one of these fail. Now, reading comments, I know of a couple different people who have reported that before, but it does seem to be a very uncommon occurrence for this slide system to just straight give up the ghost and leave you stranded. Now, when we began this little adventure together, and thank you for tuning in, by the way, one of the things that I specified was today we're going to be looking at some of the most common types of slide systems in the towable RV industry. What about motorized? And really, that's a horse of an entirely different color. That's, uh, as they would say in Winnie the Pooh, that's an entirely different story for an entirely different day. Now, there are some systems like Schwintech slides that are commonly used in like some motorhomes or some bedrooms. And that is where you tend to see, I mentioned sometimes you'll see manufacturers like triple up those rails to give them the extra strength to handle some things that are a little bit bigger. But in my free time that I don't have, I will see if sometime I can try to whip up a totally separate video on this for motorhomes. But the trick with that is when you get into motorhomes, there's a lot of very custom engineering that goes on there, like Numar. Numar basically makes their entire own slide systems that only they use in a lot of their RVs, like their big diesel pushers. So that there's, there's a lot more layers to that onion to peel back. Today's focus again on the towable RVs. Uh, there's three major types of slide systems. There's a couple other little ones that are used here and there, but for the most part, these are the things that you're going to see and encounter on a pretty much daily basis if you go out camping or shopping. So I hope you found today's video informative, educational, beneficial. If you have, if you're new with us, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Because like I said, in addition to a bunch of RV tours, we put our regular helpful information like this. That's true whether you buy from us or not. We just want to be a good member to the camping community. Um, if uh, this has been beneficial for you, leave me a little, uh, click that like button there. Smash the like button. I'm such a crappy YouTuber. I don't know. I, I hate saying stuff like that. You get the idea though. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does actually help spread this message. Um, the, uh, I, again, I've opened up tons of feedback. If you have a good experience, if you've had a poor experience, I welcome everybody to share that. Understanding that I might be throwing a live grenade across the Thanksgiving family table when I say that. But if you notice, unless somebody uses some terrible foul language, I don't filter stuff out of our comment section and I am the guy who's reviewing and responding to those. So I would love to hear from you because a lot of the information that I've shared today are various things that I've learned from uh, you folks and, and listening to your comments that you leave. So please, please keep that feedback coming and we'll keep the videos rolling. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Mm -hmm.